everyone has a fear. One of my biggest fears is being consciously aware, but locked in my body with no means of communicating with the outside world. Some of you may think this is far-fetched, but in reality, about 40% of vegetative state patients who are aware are misdiagnosed as being unconscious. And the main reason for that is because they lack the physical ability to follow commands. In other words, when these patients are asked to raise their arm or track a finger movement, and they're unable to do so, they're more likely to be diagnosed as being unconscious. There is therefore a need for a different technique to assess consciousness in these patients. And if we're able to identify that they're conscious, can we perhaps communicate with them? In 2012, Scott Routley, who was thought to be in a vegetative state for 12 years following a car accident, answered the question, are you in pain? And he did so not by physically responding, but instead by imagining playing tennis. You see, when healthy people imagine playing tennis, you imagine yourself in a tennis court moving your arm around. And part of our brain responsible for planning motion, called the supplementary motor area, is activated. In Scott's case, since he was unable to physically respond, researchers asked him to imagine playing tennis if he wanted to answer no to the question. And they recorded his brain activity using functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. Now, a high-resolution fMRI can cost a few million dollars, and its lack of portability means we cannot use it as a bedside technique. A promising alternative that we could use is functional near-infrared spectroscopy, or FNIRS, which is an optical, non-invasive technique that's portable and significantly cheaper than fMRI. Now, FNIRS is just a fancy term for shining lasers in people's heads. We place an emission fiber on the head, send millions of laser pulses, and we detect the scattered light at some distance away. If the light that we're sending interrogates part of the brain that's being activated, more light will be absorbed in that region, and as a result, we'll be detecting less light. We can use this property of light absorption to investigate which part of the brain is being activated and at what time. And if we have enough emission and detection fibers, we can entirely map the activity of the cerebral cortex. So the ultimate goal of my work is to use FNIRS to try and identify the small subgroup of patients that are able to produce this brain activity. And if we're able to do so, we can then provide a portable technique that can be used to communicate with these patients who would otherwise have no way of communicating with the outside world. And I would like to end with three words that perfectly summarize my research. Imagine, detect, communicate. Thank you very much.